Hey, this is Mike Sinisi, executive editor for Make Magazine, and I'm with Nissan Luria, who is the CEO and co-founder of Wazer, a personal desktop-sized water jet cutter. I'm super excited about this thing. Look at it. So, Nissan, um, this is the first machine of its kind. Yep. There's nothing else like this. Yep. How did this come about? What's, what's the path that you've gone to to create this? Yeah, so it started out as a research project. We were all um, engineering students, um, and we didn't have access to a water jet cutter. Um, so the goal was, let's try to build a small-scale, low-cost water jet. And that was back in 2012. We worked for a few years, developed our engineering skills at other companies. And then mid-last year, my co-founder Matt and I quit our jobs to start to develop this full-time. Water jet cutters, the ones I know, they're huge. Uh, they're huge, they require massive infrastructure, a crazy PSI just for the water pressure that is required for, for, for cutting anything. Um, what were the, some of the big challenges with taking something that's such normally such a, a burdensome beast um, and making it functional at a, at a smaller size like this? Yeah, so what we've had to do is, like you said, um, big water jets are, operate at super high pressure and use specialty components. And what we've done is we've had to um, leverage hydraulic components from other industry using off-the-shelf components, combining it with some customization to make a machine that's both affordable but still has substantial cutting power. Got it, got it. And what type of materials can this do? It can cut uh, virtually any material. So it cuts through steel, titanium, aluminum but also glass, stone, ceramic tile, and carbon fiber. Even, even titanium. That's, yeah. That's cool. Uh, thickness? Um, so it really varies um, depending on the material, and it cuts you know, th um, le thinner materials than the big water jets, um, and not as quickly, but it can still cut through 3 16 inch steel, quarter inch aluminum, 3 8 inch glass, three-eighths stone, and um, it varies by material. Um, okay, so let's get a close look at, at all of this. Um, can we open the hood? Yeah, sure. All right, so what are we looking at in here? Yeah, so uh, this is the cutting bed, um, and you fixture your material directly to it. Um, right now, we've got four different materials uh, place that, that we can cut simultaneously or one after another. We've got glass, gasket material, um, soda can, and circuit board. And um, this is the, what we refer to as the cutting head. Um, so high pressure water comes in from the pump unit and into this hose, and then the abrasive particles get fed in from the side. So the pump unit um, can live on the floor or in a different area. It's connected to the machine um, through the high pressure line, um, but all the controls are on the machine. So once you, set, once you hook up the pump unit to a water source and a drain source, then you don't really need to ever touch it. What other requirements does this need? Electricity, what's the operating voltage? 110, 220? 110, so it works off of standard 110 volt outlets. So this is good for just every household. Could set yeah. one of these up and yeah. get going with that it. Was, that was one of our um, initial requirements, is that you know, it needed to run off of 110 so that it could you know, be in any workshop, in a basement, in a garage, any sort of environment for, that a maker might have. Yeah. This thing's all set up. We can fire it up and we could do a little demo cut on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. So the first thing that you do when you uh, want to operate the machine is make sure that Wazer's got abrasive. Um, could pour some extra in here. You know, we've integrated the abrasive hopper into the machine, which is a nice feature so that it's all contained into one machine. The, the only other thing we've got to do is this, it's um, a manual Z adjustment for the height. So we have this little spacer here, put it in, loosen the Z, set it, and it's good to go. So this is a mock-up of the software that we'll be providing with the machine. Um, you still design your drawing in whatever uh, design software you're used to, whether it's CAD or you know, SolidWorks or Adobe Illustrator. You export either a .dxf or a .svg. One of the parts that we've cut is a sprocket. You, know, you load it in. There's a couple of things you can do. You can orient it on the cutting area. 
You can specify whether you want the cut to be the center line of your drawing, the inside, or on the outside. Got Which it. Kind of the you know three options for the you know, same thing as a laser cut. Um, we have the option for providing for adding additional tabs, so that way when the little um, holes get cut out, those little pieces don't. Um, float up, they're called pop-ups, and they can get caught under the cutting head and jam. So it's a little thing that um, you typically want to have them have the option of adding tabs so those things stay attached to the main part and then you just break them off afterwards. And then you would just specify the material, the material thickness and the cut quality that you want. And then you press cut and it gives you some little information. This was a sprocket. All right, so then from here, let's say we, with the, with the demo that we cut here, you guys, you'll plug in the laptop and we can cut these letters out next, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Great. Yeah. And once you're done, the abrasive collects in these buckets over here, and so we can dump out this abrasive conveniently. Am I able to pull these out? Yeah, yeah, you should be able to just pop those pieces out. So we're live on Kickstarter on Monday, September 12th, um, and you know we're going to be offering the machine there. Um, and then, you know, we've got to uh, figure out the final, put the final, final you know, we've got to launch on Kickstarter, offering the machine, and then, you know, got to put the finishing touches on it, and we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that it ships and make sure that it ships on time. Have you guys spec'd out a um, rough estimate delivery for when you think you might be shipping? Yeah, it'll be in um, the fall of next year. Great. Well, um, good luck with everything. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. I can't wait to see what everybody does with this. Thanks. Yeah, we're really excited. Um, we're really excited to get this machine out there. We're really excited to see what everyone can make with it. Very cool. All right. Cool. Thanks, Thanks, Isan. Thanks a lot.